Lifestyle guys, welcome back to another episode of Prado 150 out of here. I've got the, uh, the Mrs. Prado 150 here as well. And uh, so together, we just thought we, we haven't done a complete run through of our Jayco cross track. So we just thought we'd go through um, all the features of it and uh, you know what's, what's good, what's bad, all that kind of thing. That's right. So look, I, I do have my notes because I want to cover um, things without waffling on too much. I've got my critic here, tells me when I'm waffling on too much. <laughs> so we'll get straight into it. So I just thought I'd start by giving you a very quick rundown um, about the Jayco, with all the stats and uh, all that kind of stuff and where and how we bought it, all that. So, so um, it's a, well it's a Jayco Crosstrack. <laughs> the 2023 16 foot. All right, so it's a Jayco Crosstrack. Yeah, it's a 16 foot 2023 model. Uh, hybrid, so the um, the roof pops up. Right. And we picked it up in May of 2023. So yep. it's, yeah, heading on to a year old. I think we ordered it in February the year before, uh, the year wasn't before, it? Yeah, 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 we had a good 12 month wait. So look, I'm just gonna use some notes because I want to make sure I get all the information correct. So it has a tear weight of 15.34 kilos. Uh, the What you can load it up to, you can load it up to 1.8 uh, tonne or 1800 uh, kilograms. Uh, the bore weight is about 159 kilograms but obviously that depends on how you load it up. And uh, it also comes with, it's a Jake Tech 2 independent trailing arm um, suspension. So I've got to say in talking about suspension weights and all that, wheel track runs exactly behind the Prado, and I think this is a perfect van, you know, for our Prado 150. It is, yeah, it tows very well behind it. You don't really know it's there. What were you going for? Some extras. So I just wanted to uh, run through a couple of things in relation to the extras that we got on the on the van. So when we actually came to making the final payment and picking up the van, they were very good enough to say that some of those extras we paid for became standard. And they were good enough to refund that money uh, back to us. So that was good, good on Jayco, uh, Brisbane Camperland for doing that. So firstly, we wanted the DO35 hitch, okay. Um, I've done some research on that and even to this day, I found that's the best hitch for what we use the vehicle for, or use the van for. Uh, I wanted the extended A-frame, so in fact that became standard uh, down the track, so that's standard on the Jayco Crosstrack now. We added the filtration water filter, mm -hmm. so we added that. We got that done while it was getting made, that was easy. Yeah, that's to the main sink. Yeah, yep. yep. Uh, when we bought it, the standard uh, solar was a 180 watt solar panel. I wanted more, so it was, I found it it was probably easier for them to do it while they were making it. So we just opted for the solar. The, so that's two solar panels at 180 watts each. So we've got a total of um, what's that 360 watts sitting on the on the roof. Um, so far, that's been absolutely uh, fine for us. Uh, you got to have an air conditioner. What's the point of having a van if you don't have an air conditioner? Yeah. So we went for the Dometic uh, air conditioner, um, which is obviously on the roof. Now, Jayco have a weird wiring system. I don't know if you know about Jayco. I don't like it personally. I already knew that they had a weird setup. So I went for a BCDC charger as, a, as an option or an extra. So we got that installed. That's a 40 amp hour DC DC charger plus the heavy duty wire through the van to the Anderson plug so it can plug in to the van. I wanted to get lithium so at the time they had a standard 100 amp hour lead acid deep cycle battery. I mean <laughs> really <laughs> when you're going to do off-grid stuff so I definitely didn't want that. I figured it was easier to have it built and then install everything so that when I picked it up everything was working. So we, we opted for the two uh, 120 amp hour lithium batteries. Now that's the brand name. I'd never heard of it, but the brand name is uh, Sphere P uh, S P H E R E. Done a bit of research on that since I've had the van. Uh, everything seems okay. They've got some pretty good view reviews. Uh, seems like a fairly 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 decent batteries. However, 
down the track, uh, we just the budget just kind of ran out a bit. But I do want to put uh, iTech World batteries in there to replace them. So they're extras. But I think now those two batteries, I think, was became standard. So we got a bit of a refund on on that side of things. So some of the things that we didn't take as extras were things like the TV, um, the speakers. We just decided against those things, but and we've been we've been okay without having those things so far. Yeah. Yeah, and if we maybe we'll put a TV in if we're on a like a longer trip, just a little one, so that you can instead of sitting on your bed watching your laptop and doing some stuff, you might it might be easier to put it up onto a, a little yeah. TV. But it's it's been okay so far. And and we've used we, we, when we've been on like a extended trip we've, we've used the van or, or the weather's bad at night and we just want to sit inside we've used the laptop yeah or a portable speaker you know yeah we just, um, yeah a cheaper option um all right well let's get into it we'll start at the front and we'll work our way through uh look um if you've got any questions about the van that we haven't answered leave a comment i'm more than happy to uh to answer them overall we are happy with the the van and uh anyway yeah we'll Charlie had that look that I'm waffling. <laughs> Did you catch yeah, that? Yeah, well, just get into it. <laughs> Tell me in the comments if you it's saw hot. that. <laughs> it is a bit hot. At least it's yeah. uh, at least it's a bit clear out there. All right, let's get into it, eh? Well, folks, we'll start from the front. So obviously this is the draw bar, the extended uh, draw bar. This is the DO35 uh, hitch. So the, what I like about this hitch is when you put it on, you just click it and you know you're on red button and away you go so that's come in handy a few times and when that is down you know you, that this will go on properly if that's not pressed this you'll, you, this won't go on it just won't but when it is pressed down it just fits on there just nicely and there's no issues so just put that back ready for our next trip eh? so we've got the Anderson plugs now you know everyone knows about the uh, this one here also runs the electric brakes I've got the red arc brake controller in the Prado uh, this one here is for the sway bar now we so uh, with the anti sway uh, what we did was um, we got an Anderson plug put on it so when you get it from Jayco one of those plugs there runs the sway bar uh, we had a, a few little issues with that when we first got it but JK were good enough to fix that so anyway we, you always get teething problems so what I've done is and it's a plug on here and the idea of this is if you're on a if you're off-road somewhere and you know your van's going like this you're going down a hill or you, you know you know what it's like when you're going off-road I unplug this okay because the van thinks it's out of control and it'll start pulling brakes everywhere and I find that even when I'm reversing up into my front yard so that's the idea it runs separately you just pull it out when you don't when you don't need any sway plug it back in when you do just straightforward there um, as I said extended drawer bar uh, we've got the, the uh, nine volt gas bottles here the two of them and the nine what nine volt I hope they're not nine volts <laughs> I'll go back again so yeah we got the two nine kilo gas bottles here they're actually been full since we picked it up so that's been great We've got the storage boxes here for um, for our water. If we needed extra jerry cans for water, now you this, might you might need that on your big trip. We probably will. <laughs> there is a bit of uh, talk about the way that the laws go about what you can put in here. Um, so generally speaking, they say you, there's a note on here saying you can only put uh, water, or store water in here. That now. The way the, the law is, there has to be a crash point. So in other words, if you have a crash with a caravan, something can't just come and smack into that. Okay, so if you've got, uh, you know, fuel, probably more so for petrol, um, you risk the chance of an explosion. So what they're saying is, it'll, and unless this is all protected, uh, you can't put fuel in there. It has to be water. So uh, that that's the standard law at the moment, and Joko have uh, reminded us of that by putting their little note on there okay now Oops. 
can fix that up. What's next? Now I'll take you over to this little compartment here. Now this is Shelley's one of her favourite things about the van, but I'll let her tell you all about that. So this is one of my favourite features in the van. This is the front opening window. So it's just got this super easy cover to lift up and open. It's got its gas struts. And then this opens all the way up as well. And then you can pull your screen out or have it open, pull down your privacy blind. It's right at the end of the head of your bed. So it's, um, yeah, it's one of my favourite things to be able to lie in bed and look straight out and have a nice breeze come through. So this is normally my job when we go. They've got these uh, legs, pretty easy. Just pull out the red handle, drop it down and uh, put it back in. Use our, it's a super long adjuster, but uh, yeah, super easy. And then just pull out, lift up and you're good. Well folks, not much to look at here, just showing you the storage. So this is uh, the first one, this runs from one side through to the other, so the other side has a door as well. I'll show you a bit later, this, the fridge is in here with a fridge slide. Um, I just keep all my odds, it's got the jack for the van, uh, my pipes, uh, the winder you know, for the legs, and you know the power cord if you want to connect to power, ramps to level. Um, it's just a bit of a storage thing, things that you you're, you know, getting out to set up, that's that's the way I look at it. Uh, yeah. Well, folks, this is just another storage area. So this has access actually under the bed. There's quite a bit of room in here. You can access it from the bed. So you just lift the bed up and you've got access to it. So what we use this for, uh, if we've got the kids with us, we put, uh, you know, particularly Chloe, uh, we put uh, some swags in here. We put our chairs in there. We put our... Um, camp oven, our fire pit, all those kind of things in there so they're out of the way. Um, we've, we've got nothing in at the moment, we've just given it a bit of a clean out. We've just had uh, some work done on the van, some mods done. So we've got our 3000 watt iTech World Inverter. We've got that sitting in here and uh, Max Caravan's put that in for us. They've kindly put a protective little plate across it so that it doesn't get wrecked, you know, when you, you know what it's like when you're shoving things uh, in and out. So uh, yeah, plenty of room in here. Uh, we don't really, I don't know, we don't really fill it up when it's just me and Shelley. But uh, yeah, very, it's, it's uh, very handy. But more about the uh, inverter later. Well folks, just moving it further along the side of the van. So this is, uh, it's all pretty, pretty basic here, but we've got a uh, TV antenna socket. So this is where you put your antenna out, up on the roof, wherever you want to put it. Uh, inside here, is um, you know where you plug your 240 in if you're at a caravan park or you've got power or whatever you, you want to do. Uh, that's pretty, everyone's got that on a caravan. And this is the uh, circuit breaker or you know something goes wrong or whatever, it, uh, it flicks off. So that's for that, for the 240 side of things. I'm always gonna remember to do this because I have driven off and the thing's flapping around in the wind. <laughs> um, this, just, yeah, that's super handy though. Yeah, that's just when you've got your 240 volt lead uh, just moving along, so this is the uh, gas hot water system, okay, so uh, just open it up there, it's all fairly straightforward I suppose, yeah, everyone's got, most people have one of these on their vans I suppose, um, so yeah just the standard gas hot water. So this particular unit for the Jayco, so it uh, heats up 20 litres of water, so it has a, a storage of 20 litres and they, it takes about 20 minutes to heat up, you know, when you first park up that type of thing. Uh, it also has um, an electric hot water system as well built in. So same thing, 20 litres takes about 20 minutes to heat up. Um, it just stores the 20 litres, so often what we're in the shower, sometimes you feel it, yep, it's it's running out. If you jump in straight away after the first person's had a shower. And if you've just washed up too. Oh yeah, of course. If you do the yeah. three in a row, then you've, yeah, the last person sort of might miss out there. But someone that's done a lot of camping um, I don't know, I don't know you call it rougher, but you know, we've had a camper trailer that's had no hot water except boiling in the kettle. So I've got to say, this is an absolute luxury. It's nice just to turn the tap on and have hot water running. So I really quite enjoy that, especially, you know, doing dishes and all that kind of stuff. So yeah, that just goes in there. 
Uh, while we're here, so this is just a um, Anderson plug for if you want to put extra solar on there. So sometimes I'll put a 200, the 200 watt iTech wheel solar panel. It doesn't, it's not regulated, so it doesn't have to be regulated. Uh, the DC DC charger. Sorry, not the DC DC charger. Sorry, that which I'll go into it more once we get inside. The battery management system this goes into, and it you know does its thing, so it doesn't have to be regulated. JK on this side, it's just got the two windows. They just flick out, pretty standard. Um, same with this one here, same thing. We've got the, the blinds inside, but once we're inside, we'll show you how all that works. And I'll take you down to the most exciting part of the van, the toilet. So another bit of luxury in the van that we've never had before. It's nice to have a, a toilet and shower. Um, and mainly you know for the ladies a bit of a bit of comfort and here it is so look everyone's seen one of these before and you've seen me on other videos doing the walk of shame <laughs> so um works like a treat and uh we're very happy with it folks uh standard thing on vans down this end so we just got the uh the connections to fill up you know we've got two two tanks and they're at 80 litres per, per tank of water. And when you're having showers, I tell you what, you don't realise how quick you go through that water. So it, it's got provision to fill up one, one tank at a time. It also has, if you, you know, if you had a caravan park or whatever, you can plug the mains into it. We've done that before, works a treat. So you just plug your hose into that part of it. Um, also we had initially just, again, breathing problems, but I'll tell you about it. Uh, there are other videos on this if you want to have a bit more of a look at it, but Every time we went around a corner, all our water would come out the breather pipe or the top of the wherever wherever they Jaco had. I wasn't sure, but all I knew is that when we got to where we were going, we lost you know up to 25% of our water capacity on each tank. So that's a lot of water. So anyway, Jaco uh, has come to the party and sorted us out, and they've put pipes uh, along there for the breather with a tap on the end. So basically, when you camped up at night you can you turn the tap on so that lets the air into the tank when you're using it and when you're traveling you just turn it off so no water comes out just noticing a bit of, a bit of stuff going on here shall we we haven't even taken this thing on the beach and it looks like it's had a bit of a bit of something going on there but anyway something to have a look at check with um it is going in it is going in for a checkup uh, down at Max Caravan soon, uh, ready for the big trip. So some of these little rusty areas, I'm going to have them checked out because sh they shouldn't really be uh, be happening. But anyway, no big deal. Folks, just moving around to the back of the van. There's not much happening here. Uh, we don't have any crazy bike racks or storage boxes on the back here, but what we do have, we've got an external uh, shower. So this is actually quite handy, especially um, you know if you're with the, the kids and all that kind of stuff. So uh, it does come with, also has hot water as well. So uh, yeah, we we'll just turn her on and away it goes. And uh, you know, you got outside water without having to have anyone go inside your, your van. The trick is though, make sure you do this back up again when you take off, not like I've done and get halfway home. And this has unwound itself and it's lying down like that while you're driving down the highway. Not a, not a good look. From no, very lucky, out of here. very lucky it didn't do any damage there. Yeah, we drove from the Gold Coast to Marburg like that, didn't we? So, um, it's fairly easy, you just, uh, it's all turned off, so we just do that back up. And yeah, just make sure you turn the taps off as well. Um, look. I'm probably telling you stuff you, you probably anyone already does, but we got told 
particularly to do that because uh, you know you don't want um, this resting up against it while you're traveling down the road and uh, lose all your water um, before you get to your destination. Just on the other side, so this is the door side, passenger side, however you want to say it. Standard door, light here. And the door opens up, it's got the fly screen as well, so nice and tough. You can obviously lock it, pin this part of the back. Um, and then this one here, it just fits in here. It's going to be like that, no worries at all. At the moment, we've got the awning up, but you just got to be really careful that you don't cut anything or you know ruin your ruin your awning. Uh, just moving along here, so we've got a couple of plugs. This is a 12 volt uh, socket. So um, JK didn't have any 12 volt sockets inside the van. I think we went out winter. I think it was. We took a 12 volt electric blanket. So I ended up running it along extensionally through here, and through the those windows up the top there, and then we had 12 volts. But since then, I've got some extras installed, and initially the uh, socket, SIG socket for normally when you if you'd had a TV, uh, it wasn't working, so that's now working. So we're all we're all good for 12 volts. Um, this is the other end of the um, aerial, you know, the socket, whatever, to plug your TV in. So um, you know, aerials on the roof, plug your TV into here. We don't have a TV, so we're not worried about that at the moment. A couple of extra 240 plugs, just your standard 240 plugs in there. Uh, they come in handy when you are using the kitchen, which I'll show you in a minute. Make sure I put them back in. So uh, the kitchen, oops, still getting used to it. <laughs> Shelly reminds me it's a two-handed job. So uh, got some good struts here and here, got a nice light in here. So yeah, moving over, we've got the sink. As I said before, it's wonderful to have hot water uh, coming out. Do your dishes and that. And we've got the light there, so that's pretty pretty straightforward. Something to hang your, your towels on. Now, this uh, this year's model, or the 23 model, somehow has a different surface. And um, what's that? What are they called? Where you fusion to stick? lock? So the fusion lock won't actually stick on here, which is a bit of a shame. But anyway. Um, worst issues in life isn't there <laughs> we did try the extra sticky part as well that people recommend but even that fell off Just so worry. I'm not sure I think the only way to, for us to add extra storage or hanging is to actually screw it into the wall yeah. which I know people have done so and so yeah here it's just your standard uh, Dometic um, couple of gas burners there cleaner than the one he keeps in the car uh, yep I don't really use that it's anymore. Because I wash clean up. So yep, yeah, and just there we we cover this when we're using it as a bench top just to protect the glass. Um, and sorry, this is the water we're talking about. So there's a I'll show you the filter, but yeah, we've got contact filtered water, which is pretty good. Um, storage here. It's probably a bit more Shelley's department, but yeah, we just store stuff up there. Shelley didn't Come come. Shelley didn't come with me on my last trip. My department. And I took it on a, I took it to the Springs 4x4 park and a few little rough, rough tracks. So uh, it's good when you got the two of you because you both kind of, I don't know, lean off each other, don't you? To make sure everything's all secured, you know, yeah, you got your jobs. But when it's just you, excuses I know, but uh, yeah, I think so. maybe there's more solo trips for me to so I can make sure I get used to it. <laughs> So there you go, that's that's the and kitchen. Underneath here you got another storage section. Do you want to unlock it? So um kitchen there and you know this is where you can keep another lot of stuff in there. So you know we've just got a few frying pans, the kettle, and uh, yeah, so we're pretty happy with, with that, with the storage. We've just got this um you wanna just show this stuff here we've got Shelly? No, because I tried to and you didn't want to. So we just got this um Stuff here is like a non-slip, isn't it, Shelley, for making sure things don't slip around the place. Seems to be working all right, especially up in here, <laughs> in those shelves. So uh, that just closes up. Um, so yeah, that's the kitchen. I'll just pop him down. Two hands, of course. Uh, we've got the awning there, but uh, there's plenty of videos for, you've seen us with the whole setup. 
uh, moving along so we've just got this is the other end of that side so it's just it's just goes straight through this side we've got the fridge so it's just the fridge slides probably looking a bit messy at the moment I haven't really got back to this area um, but yeah we've got the fridge the slide uh, we've just had a little mishap here I don't know what's happened but normally that clips into that um, so I've got to take that back and get that sorted but you know you can put your Weber and whatever else we, we use that for cooking you know when you're cooking plates whatever it is so not a bad idea from Jayco fridge slide seems to be working fine uh, we already did a bit of research before we, we bought it and you just got to make sure that you keep this door completely open and not run your slide up and down because it'll rub on all those rubbers and uh, you'll have them wrecked so. so also just inside here we've got the uh, just got to hold that door open we've got the filtration system so it's a water guard uh, filter which yeah is what where that sits So, just going to show you, you, you've seen this in other videos, but I'll just quickly show you the, all these clips we just undo, there's four of them. And we're going to pop the roof up, and then uh, we're going to whack the air conditioning on, because we've got 240 inverter, so we'll show you how that works as well. So with this with this caravan, I think they're all the same, but um, we're talking about the Jayco Crosstrack here, obviously. So there's a bit of a sequence in putting up the roof, and if you don't do it, properly or correctly you can break stuff okay so um, I haven't been there yet but I've gone no that wasn't right and you've got to go and start again so before we put up the roof um, to protect the awning the awning's going to come out a little bit and then that gives the awning a bit of I don't know flexibility whatever however you'd say it because when the roof goes up it's going to pull some of the awning with it as well then you just adjust the you can put the awning back up to where it is now and then you just got to be careful with the door so I'll just do that now this is probably the most timely thing about you know you pulled up your camp and, and you're getting the roof up this one here we just got a strap we just got to flip this over bring him out just enough, enough distance there to get that door open Yeah, so I, I just opened the door up enough just to sneak in there um, it's probably good to leave the door open a little bit if you can because obviously when you're shoving that roof up you're creating a, a vacuum so uh, it's much easier to get the roof up if you've got a door open now now Shelly there's a, another little way to do this isn't it which ends first the door end is first and you never do it <laughs> that's how JK told us door end first Put that end up first and then you hop on the bed and push the other end up. And Folks, so lights are on. Um, we're not on power. We're on the 240. So we're just going to turn the inverter on. So uh, we've got all this. This is all new, but I'll run through that later. So we just turn the inverter on here, and uh, as you can see, sitting at 99 percent. That means that the battery's full. I've got another light here, so we'll just turn this one on, and we'll get the air conditioning on because Shelly's just about to die in here. Oh, it's so hot. Turn that light back on. Oops. Don't worry about me, I'm trying to film and operate this at the same time. So we'll just turn that fan up a bit. 
auto. We uh, also got some Zrock. There's that fan shell in the new one if you want to turn that on. With that cranking. Oh yeah. So we just had this one. It comes standard with the one up near the bed. Yep. If you can see that. So we bought another one. And um, yeah, turn it on on the side there, baby. Watch your fingers. A little bit more. There we go. Oh, you gotta undo it. That's it. That's it, undo it. All the way. Yep. And then move it around. So we thought this would be this was a perfect spot for it here because it can go um, onto the bed area or when we're just sitting in here. So now I'll just to interrupt you, so I just thought I was just looking at this. See how it's a slow startup? So the power, the air conditioning, the Dometic, this one's good for the uh, when you're off grid, so it's just slowly climbing up, it's not a big you know, I hit it at um, 100 amp hours or whatever it is. So, so that should start cooling down. So we're completely, um, even though we're parked outside our house, we are not connected to the power at all. So we're completely what you'd call off grid. If you uh, would call that here in the front yard. Anyway, let's get back to what we we're showing the folks. Um, this should down. start to cool down in a minute, so that'll be good. Now, I thought I'd just interrupt you again because obviously I'm just watching how the air conditioning is going. It's pretty hot outside and it's pretty hot in the van. So I'm just going to show you this screen here. So she's pretty much cranking her heart out here. So 16, 20, 33 watts, 130 amps it's using. So at that rate, we've got an hour and 47 minutes left on the batteries. We're going to, I think the best ideal way is just to run it for half an hour. Normally if you're out bush at night time and you want to cool things down before you go to bed or or whatever otherwise um yeah you'd be as you can see 240 amp hours you'd be pretty much um you'd be draining it pretty quick but anyway it's a good it's a good little tester um it's now sitting at 18 21 watts it's using 146 amps so wow that's uh that's up there isn't it it's uh yeah it's pulling a bit so um we'll see how she goes so we've got some pretty good storage here in the van we've got uh these little side uh pockets I suppose you can call them with the elastic there so you can put a bit in so we've got one on this side I, I use that as security. Side. security that's security, security isn't it? yeah good on you nah, that's the I think mean, that's the that's uh, squidgy it. oh no, it's yeah. a squidgy clean the shower the squidgy uh, oh yeah that's right so we've got one here and we've got three over this side so they're really handy you can actually fit I fit a fair bit of stuff in them I've sort of rejigged different times what I put in them clothes or toiletries and things like that then we've got our main cupboard here, so it's got a couple of shelves, got a bit of extra wire in there now, but that's alright. So, that's handy. And then, oh, I'll climb up here. So we've got two cupboards here. These are pretty good, they're really decent. Scrabble. Yeah, Michael never plays games. Tell me, do you play games when you go camping? Because the one holding the camera right now does not like <laughs> to play like games so let me know in the comments if you have someone who doesn't like to or does like to play and what's your favorite game so storage in there whoops down the screw yeah that's the one that doesn't screw it's really annoying anyway uh this one's just another one just got blankets and stuff like that in the, there that we the don't winter. really need uh, then we've got this. This is called the Concussion Maker. So it is it is a 50-50 with owners of the Jayco Crosstrack, whether or not people leave it in or they remove it themselves. Uh, but we haven't had to remove it yet. It's got good storage up here. I put my books up here for reading and stuff like that. We've also got um, a light each and it's got a USB charger in there as well. It has a blue light and a white light, there we go, like that, and you can move them around, there's the fan, now this, I'm sitting on an in the spring uh, mattress as well, it's, it's uh, double size, and it's pretty comfy, this is the other feature that I really liked um, when we looked at the van, so I can open up The window and I can push it right out I can pull the screen down or I can uh, pull the privacy up at night time 
and it's the best because it just lets all the light in and the air in. So I really like that and I just like looking out because it's really good. It's really good to stick your beak on other people with cat brains. <laughs> Uh, so, yeah, we've got the windows, like I said, they've got the uh, mesh screen and also the privacy screen, so you can put it up at whatever height you need, so if it's raining you can still have it open but lift it up so it's not going to get wet. We've got all of these, these are really handy to sit them down and roll them down, so we've still got the four, even though it's a small van, it's still the pop top, so you can still get a nice airflow through all four windows. A toilet Shelly, hey? Hopefully toilet. it's clean. That's right. So no, I kept it clean. So it's got this um, just little screen that comes around. It just comes just to there. So that's a bit of either privacy or just if you've got the air con running like we have, you um, keep the hot air out from your shower. So we have, um, it's got a removable shower head. Now I have heard, this is what Jayco gives you, however I have heard that people have replaced their shower head to a more water efficient one. So it might be something that we will look at um, to do that. Just sits there. And then we've got a basin here, which we've never actually used because we just don't wash our hands in here. We just use uh, the sink beside it on the outside. Uh, but you could wash it here, it's got the hot and cold water but we just haven't had to use it yet. Just clips in. Uh, and then we've got standard, the toilet. Standard toilet, standard toilet yeah. which yeah, is pretty good, nice good. and clean. Um, you just gotta make sure at night time you wipe it over um, at night time after the last person's had a shower. Just and the job. floor, just make sure you swish all the last bit of water down because if you do get up in the night, you don't wanna stand on a wet floor. Um, yeah, so that's the toilet and shower. So we also have a little exhaust fan, so it can take the air out, but it can also blow the air in, um, and it comes with a, a light. Yeah, no, you can't reach can't it. Reach. It comes with a light as well, and then this is your fan, and then that's your little turner to put the vent up and down. One of the things you've got to make sure you're closed before you take off, eh? Yeah, that's right, it's a bit closed. done that once. <laughs> uh, so yeah, then we've got another storage pocket here. And we've got a sink inside, this is really handy. It's looking a bit dirty at the moment. I don't know. How about yeah, that? Can use the kettle, cold cold water got... in here. Yeah, we've got the power. Michael likes his little kettle. We've got storage. Um, storage cupboard here. Michael's storing his bushwhacker things Walls, in here. Yep. I pinched a toaster off my mum and dad because they got a new one, so mm -hmm. I pinched their old one. Um, yeah, yeah, I need to fix that up with a bit better storage. It's just sort of all put in at the moment, but works so far. And we've got four drawers just for storage as well. Just your standard. Yeah, it's standard drawers. Nothing Some exciting pieces, in them. You know, odds and ends, everyone yeah, has their odds a, and ends. It needs a good clean out that. It's sorted out, I think. And, um, yes. what we've added on yeah we can do that but also just while we're here so this is just a basic um, you know switches for the for um, you know turning things on and off we've also got uh, a remote on the phone we can access as well to turn certain things on and off uh, we just installed that but there'll be more about that later in relation to um, a booster for the internet and going into Wi-Fi it's a pretty good system uh, these are just the boxes left over from the iTech world installation so, uh, yeah. Oh, one thing we haven't done is just to say that we have our um, skylight. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So it's got your privacy cover to keep the light out. Um, or you can put your screen across. And, or you can have it wide open. But it just open pops up, up um, yeah. opens right up. So nice to look at the moon, isn't it? it night, yeah, it gets a bit bright sometimes though. So, yeah. yeah. It's got to work out why that's not closing completely. So. When it goes in to get checked with um, yeah. before a big trip, I'll get them to look at that. Awesome. You don't actually want to chop your hands off. So, I've learnt this by nearly getting my hands stuck in there. When you go to open it up, you don't want to open it like you, 
lift up under the mattress to grab it but then you've got to get your hands out otherwise the force of the gas struts like squishes your hand between the mattress and that and it's really hard to get it out but the only thing is they actually have a handle on it that is one negative it's that you've got to get goes up there. You just don't want to have your hand between there. Alright. There you go, we're back to all that space underneath where you can access there, so that's pretty cool. There we go. Not much to it there. So yeah, we can access it from inside. Going wild with the air con, so oh, the other it's using up 125 amp hours if you wanted to know shall I? No I didn't but that's okay. The uh, <laughs> yeah the one last thing is um, this is where the table goes from inside. It was a, a, a decent sized square one. A lot of people, um, either t we, we've taken it out because we don't really need it inside for just the two of us. Um, we eat, eat if outside we, anyway. And if it's bad weather, well, we're, we can, we've got the bench space next to the sink there and we can just eat our plates or have our plates on our lap. But some people have actually taken the big square one off and they've replaced it with a, a small round one, which is a lot more uh, user friendly. So something that we could, look at but yeah we've just taken it out yeah. okay. how easy to just put down shall we go down yep just give it a push down there you go all right there you go well folks it just leaves me to talk about uh the important things of the, of the van that uh we're all interested in so i'm just going to go through basically the electrical system uh of this van so i'm just going to grab my notes because I'm just going to grab my notes because I just wanted to go through what we had before we started, you know, modifying a few things. All right. So, uh, as standard, so when we bought, when we were, when we uh, first went in to get the car, the, the van. So the standard of the 2023 Jayco Crosstrek was, um, it had one AGM battery, 100 amp hour. Okay. Um, it had its projector battery management system. Jayco has a weird wiring system i knew that anyway and I, I wanted to kind of override that so they had uh and don't quote me on this but they had some weird stuff where they had a lead into where your fridge goes that ran off the car and it was just a bit uh, a bit crazy or antiquated knowing that uh first thing i asked them is that i wanted a proper dc dc charger coming from the car it was important to me um also i needed lithium batteries and i wanted you know solar so they had some options you could up, uh, other than you know upgrade what they already had so what I did was I opted for some of the packages I I thought it would be easier to just tick the boxes for what I wanted so that when it, you know it gets built in Melbourne so when it got built it would be all ready to go and they can test it and make sure everything was working okay um, so when I drove out I knew that I could pretty much go camping off grid uh, with everything working fine. Like a caravan with no batteries in it when I picked it up I didn't want uh, a, no no DC DC charger system in place. I figured it was better for them to put it in while they were building it. So look they're, they're just all the details sorry I hope I hopefully I haven't bored you too much with, with some of that I just wanted to let you know what what we got and what I you know went with and what I've done to the van since. So the Jayco comes with it's standard you know projector battery management system to be quite honest I don't know a lot about it their DC DC charger is, is an option for charging a battery in the car and I, I, I don't know anything about it so I can't comment on that all I can comment is so far since having it it's done its job it seems to be running fine plug the power in the 240 volts it knows that it's there um, run on battery you know it's fine it's doing all the right things so I can't can't comment uh, about it. The, the DC DC charger is a projector as well it's a 40 amp so so far I'm happy with it okay so you know I drove out of Jayco which was a plan and I had all this stuff re ready to go and I thought I'll just add on to it change it you know as I go and as I save up for it. Now um, d the spec details on the DC DC charger for what it comes with okay it's a trans PM335J 
plus uh, yeah so that's that's what it is projector um, it's 40 amps and I've also made sure they put put in which was an added option the heavy-duty wire um, with the Anderson plug so far so good no issues uh, solar uh, we've we've had we went for the extra solar so we now have well, we've got two times 180 watts on the roof so that was a option we paid for because I wanted more solar uh, on the roof and I thought it would be easier for them to do it obviously while they were building the van projector has there's no screen you know like the, I've now got a screen which I'll talk about that later. I keep saying things I'm going to talk about later, but I'm just wanted to give you an overview of the Jayco Crosstrack at this stage. But I will do videos specifically on the inverter that I've stored and the um, battery monitor that came from Hitech. Well, that's that'll be a different video. So, but with the projector, no screen, but you Bluetooth into uh, into it, and it comes up with um, you know you can turn your hot water system on and off the pump and it gives you um, what the battery's doing all right so shelly has been good enough just to bring that app on her phone so that's what we're looking at now things are a bit high wire with this okay because um i'll tell you that in a second while while i'm not really uh, using that anymore that little bit there where it says house battery but we certainly do use it it tells us how much solar is coming in um it says 20 amps of solar coming in that's that's not too bad and um, you know you can turn the water pump on and off the hot water etc etc it tells you how much is in the tanks so the tanks are full at the moment I like to leave them full when they're being stored people might have a different idea you either leave them completely full or completely empty I've decided to use them completely full so that the van's ready at the last minute to go camping of course all right so what I'll do is I'll just explain to you we've in, we've uh, installed or Max have installed for me um, the inverter so you can't put the inverter through the existing project uh, battery management system to see you know what it's doing it doesn't have you just can't do it so I wanted to leave the projector in because it's running perfectly and it's running everything so I want it to be as less complicated as possible that's why I've got the iTech Worlds uh, screen up there which um, which I've shown you so I'm using that now so it tells me what's going on i don't use that little thing now on the app because it's not obviously uh, i've had to put the shunt directly onto the battery and um, the projector obviously isn't going to be reading that shunt it has its own shunt in there but it's definitely uh, not big enough to <laughs> for what we want so um, hopefully that makes sense so look um that's our you know that's our electrical system oh, at the moment um, I don't have any uh, complaints or anything like that um, it seems to be running fine I mean we've been sitting in this air conditioner for for a little while now and it's definitely cooled things down um, there's been no hiccups the battery sits on 73 percent from that screen the iTech world battery management system um, there's probably not really much else to show you uh, when they installed the everything they offered to give me a, a switch so that um so that when when the inverter's on it's not running back through to ch charge the battery again if you know what i mean like doing a loop but um look I, i've got used to just turning the turning that part of it off the charging part so i haven't um yeah i haven't really worried about about doing that so um showing them everything in the van yeah i think that's it look I might have, might have uh, made a, a mistake. As I say, I don't know much about the projector uh, stuff, but um, I'm just looking at it from this angle. It says a PMDC 30, so that's going to be 30, 30 amp hours, not 40. So I'll just let you, let you guys know before the video finishes that it's actually 30. Not really a big deal, but I just wanted to clarify that with you guys. I didn't think I was giving you a bum steer on the information. So. Um, yeah, that the electrical system. I think that wraps it up. There's not much more um, to it. We we, uh, we we probably don't use a lot of 240 volts. I like boiling the kettle. I, I do. It's convenient. Um, and you know, I do. I don't mind running the air conditioner. Uh, like in the future, we're not going to run it heaps. We're just going to use it to cool things down before bed. And you know, in the summer, we, uh, in the winter, sorry, we'll probably use it to heat it up a bit just before you go to bed. 
Um, we've got an electric blanket if we need it, and uh, inside, I, I think it's pretty good, Shelley, isn't it? Like from the yeah, elements, we're pretty much too. protect us from the elements. Uh, I'm not, yeah, and and I'm happy. The 12 volt stuff's perfect. I mean, you know, we've got we've got our lights. We we're not probably one for all the fandangle bits and pieces, do we? I mean, we travel pretty light. Um, you know, like on a on an extended holiday, we'll use it to charge up the the laptop. Um, but yeah, we're, we're probably not big users of 240 volts when we're camping. Um, I'm, I'm more the, we're out of here, you know, we don't take stuff to do, to use. We just get out there and enjoy camping. It's just nice, I suppose, being protected in here when the weather's not, not too crash hot, hey? So, anyway, well, I'll put all this back together, guys. And, um, that's, that's the, uh, the power side of things. If you, if you've got any comments, questions or anything, um, just yeah just ask me put them in the comments if you've just bought yourself this type of van or a van or the Jayco Crosstrack uh, you might be towing it behind a Prado um, yeah let me know and um, I've, we've had this for a little while I've had a had not really off-road just a bit off-road um, but it certainly tows pretty well so um, we're going to go into just going through a few pros and cons and a, a, a bit of a summary um, what we think of the Jayco Crosstrack Well, we're going to, uh, thanks, if you got this far, we really appreciate it. Hopefully we've provided uh, some information about the Jayco Crosstrack and also towing, you know, with the Prado. So I'm just going to run quickly through the towing side of things. Then we're going to go through the, the cons and pros and finish it off. So, um, so towing, look, oh, as you know, we've got the Prado 150. Uh, it's a three litre uh, 2015 model. So, I don't mind towing this van with the Prado. It, it actually tows very well. I'm very impressed. The wheel tracks are the same. I haven't taken it on the beach in the soft sand yet. I haven't done a, a lot of uh, off-road stuff with it. But just generally towing and and taking it to the Springs 4x4 park, there was a bit of you know this going on, and and it, it seemed to be fine. But I will say the only thing I'm worried about off-road is the two battery boxes sitting on the outside. And what I'm thinking is if I've got an angle like this. I'm just worried that they're going to hit the hit the ground, but anyway, I'll uh, see what happens with that and let you guys know. So um, we'll go into, I suppose, the pros or the, the, the good parts about the Jayco. I'll just say overall, um, we're we're pretty happy with it. I am. Um, yeah. Yep. Overall, I think you are. Good. Yep. Yep. Uh, it, it met the, the budget side of things. I mean, it. Uh, well, it had to meet the budget and it had to meet the towing capabilities for the car because we weren't upgrading. We didn't want to change the cars, yeah. So they were the two biggest things. So, yeah. And, and then we wanted a, a shower inside. So, shower, a shower and toilet. So, but because it's always just the two of us inside, if the kids come, they're in their swags or a rooftop. So we didn't need other bedding in here. We didn't need big tables or anything like that. There is enough room though if, they, if the whole family was camping together, we could fit five of us sitting in here eating dinner if it was absolutely terrible weather outside. We could all fit in here, sit down and watch something on the laptop if you wanted to. Like we could still all fit in here. It would be cozy, but you could do it. So yeah, towing, car and budget. And for that, it, it ticked all the boxes. Yeah. And I do like the hybrid um, part, you know, the, where the roof comes down when you when you are driving. I, I, I think that's, that's... And it's very easy to set up. There's no issues oh, with yeah. that. Yeah. So, yeah, so covering on that. So it is light. Uh, it is under two, you know, two tonne for the Prado. And uh, the ball weight's fine. So um, all that is, is good. So... We we always think um, there's nice to have a few comforts, but if you if you're going camping, that's what it's all about, isn't it? It's being outside, outdoors, keeping it fairly simple, isn't it? Would you agree with me on that? Yeah. So we we're enjoying the kitchen outside. 
are you enjoying the you know the kitchen is outside oh yeah, yeah and so I, I don't mind the the kitchen how it comes up and it's on the side I think is way better than the ones that pull right out that that's my preference obviously other everyone has their own preferences as to how but I prefer the kitchen on the side like that as opposed to a complete pull out one it's very easy to use everything's right there in front of you um, yeah lift up the door you're down and you got the fridge right beside you the only issue with the only con with the kitchen outside with that is that the fridge is beside and it's out of the awning cover so that when it is raining um, and you want to access the fridge you do get wet you can get um, extra awning sides made though that come out over that um, but we we just do a quick run yeah I mean the only the only thing with the kitchen outside is that in the rough weather you're not you know um, you know you're not protected. The worst case scenario. In, in saying that, our worst case is that we bring the induction cooker inside. Yeah, and we and cook. and we've got a sink, so we yeah. can still cook. And and that was why one of the other things looking at here, it had the sink inside and it still had the bench space um, that we can still come in and do if we needed to. And and the gas burners are still kind of hidden in that little area, so they're still. Yeah. Protected in, in, a, in a sense. Yeah. yeah. So, um, so we like that. The uh, well, one one thing I like, which is it's a bit of a novelty, really, I suppose, because um, I've been camping with other people that have this, and I've just been in a, in a swag. Is the turning the tap on? You got hot water running. I mean, I think that's less mucking around. You know, if you're doing dishes and all that, and of course, you know, you shower, but. And I suppose if you're comparing this now, we've got this compared to how we used to go camping. Um, you know, if you can camp, you can get out a bit more in the not so great weather. Keeping one of a couple of these things in mind when we bought it, so it was just a, a compromise. Uh, I suppose for a few things that are a bit like um, you, you'll understand it. We compa you know, we compared a compromise with the towing, the weight convenience uh, that kind of stuff so I suppose one thing that comes to mind is the toilet and shower in the one place and when you see the bigger vans with a nice bathroom area that 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 can be appealing but we knew that when we, we bought it oh yeah yeah we yeah obviously it would be way nicer to have a separate toilet yeah. and shower yeah. and a separate basin in there like your whole thing you might have room for washing machine but obviously all of that adds to the weight of your yeah. van and it adds to your budget yeah. and we just you have to stop somewhere yeah. yeah so we've still got a toilet and we've got a shower and we have a sink it's just and, and not we're, as fancy and we're just grateful we've got it because yeah. um you know we just scraped in to get it at that what we paid for it so um you know and, and i suppose the other thing is and people mention or ask about this is um, yes, and it would be nice to be able to walk around the side of your bed um, to get to it. Yeah, it's not. I mean, you're not on your bed all the time. You're only in really at night time for, the, for the, when you're out camping. So it's just we've got a little step, and it's just step up and into bed. Once you're in, you're it's, in. It's you don't get out of anything. Yeah. Charlie's got the window seat. Yeah, I've got the window, and we've got the cupboards there. So it's yeah. and we've got the window at the head. So even though you're missing the side window on Michael's side we've still got the head window which sort of counteracts and that. they're all compromises aren't yeah, they? They're they different, are. different things yep. um, you know I'm hoping we can get this we will never get another van while he has the Prado so you know if we want a bigger van then we have to change cars so then I don't know what would become of us because we would no longer be Prado 150 yeah <laughs> so you know it looks like we're stuck yeah. with it yeah so there yeah as I said they're all compromises, they're all just different things that you go, well, yeah, well, we got this, but we haven't got that. And at the end of the day, um, I'm happy, you're happy, we're all happy with what we've got. You know, you can get out and be comfortable more, more often, you know, it's a bit yep. more nicer than, and you have done that camper trailer before, um, oh, yeah. and the kids have been in swags, and we've had absolute rainfall coming through where we were camping, it wasn't, it wasn't very nice. Uh, you've you've done the hard the hard yards, or we've both done the hard yards, but yeah. you know from a, your side of it. And um, me personally, I, I I wanted Shelley to come out more, and I wanted it to be a bit more comfortable for her. So 
our toilet and shower for, for the ladies is obviously something that's um, boys are easy, you know, we find a tree or dig a hole um, and I appreciate that's not uh, you know the same for the, for the ladies. So overall we're happy. Um, I'll have to say that we have had a few teething little things but in saying that Jayco at, at Brisbane, that's where we bought it from, Brisbane Campland, they I'll have to say they've been surprisingly very good about it and uh, the, you know it, it's a pain having to drive the two hours down there. I did hit him up once for um, for my lunch because <laughs> it was the second time in a month that I'd been down there and look to their credit you know I, 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 won't, I was kind of being a semi smarty pants um, but but they to their credit they they refunded my lunch. I gave them a re receipt for thirty bucks or whatever, and they, they paid it. Yeah, because you had to go down. Yeah, twice. I mean, it, you know, that's it's two hours each way plus your, your fuel and and things that shouldn't go wrong in the first place. So it's so done. I'll just say, Shelley's given me the waffling on too much bit. I probably am. Well, maybe I am. But anyway, look, I'll, we will sum it up. We'll finish it off here. But uh, overall. Uh, I just want to—I want to say that we are 100% happy with the, with the Jayco Crosstrek with this model. Okay, I don't know if, we, if we'd like the new one because you said about the, the new ones have the pull-out kitchen. Some people Some like. Some of them do, yeah, I believe yeah. so. Yeah. So we are happy with this, and if we had our time again, we we would be happy to buy buy this again. Uh, and we've had it since new first. Something There's new, new thing we've ever had, you know, yeah. in that kind of cross run. So yeah, we are we are happy. We're just doing things, you know, like everybody. You just do things after the fact, just to make things what you how you want it and what you want it for. So that's right. So I, I hope would, I would recommend buying one. That's right. So I hope you've enjoyed and learned a bit about our Jayco Cross Track. And yeah, if you've got any questions, yeah, look, let leave, us know. leave some leave some comments. We are on Instagram. Friday 150 out of here, Instagram, and we're also on Facebook, Friday 150 out of here. Yeah. Facebook, and dare I say TikTok as well. I do put a few things there, but. Um, yeah. Alright. All Done. Right. Friday 150 out of here, eh? See you on the next camping expedition. That'll be going across the other side of Australia, I think. That's right. <laughs> See you. Woo.